Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are reacting to the Mirai Fury Inside Star Citizen episode. So let's get right into it guys. I ain't, I'm excited for the ship, so let's see what they're talking about. Invictus is here and for the next two weeks, we'll be learning and showcasing as much as we can about the new- Whoa, 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 we got an Easter egg right here? Is this an Easter egg right here? Hold on, let me move myself over. To this side you guys see are, are, are you guys seeing this right here is that a, is that a lightsaber is that some type of light weapon are we getting are we getting an Easter egg right here or are they trying to tell us something you know what I mean like this to me I don't know what I don't know what y'all think right I don't know what y'all think but to me this look like a light. I, you guys can't see my mouse, okay? You can't see my mouse. But over here on the right side of the screen, below Jared's left hand, slightly to the right of his left hand, which is kind of weird to say, because his left hand is, you know, on the right side of the screen, okay? I don't, guys, listen. All right, anyway. This, to me, looks like a lightsaber, okay? Are, are, are you trying to tell us something, Jared? Are, 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 are you trying to hint at something coming in the future during these next two weeks? New weapons and things being delivered into the game? I see you being sneaky. I've not, you know, to be honest, I haven't seen every Inside Star Citizen episode that has ever existed, right? But, I mean, this is the first time I'm seeing a lightsaber. I mean, I would... I would be hard pressed to think that they would have a Disney prop on the set of Star Citizen. Okay, I don't know if there's any more Disney props around here, but I'm just gonna speculate that they're working on some lightsabers, and they gotta call it something else: light sword, plasma sword, whatever you wanna call it. Just give it to us. New ships and vehicles making their debut at this year's event. And since there's nothing that I can say that's anywhere as cool as what you're about to see, let's just get right to it, shall we? We have a lot of ships and vehicles in our game now. Keeping brands with a consistent theme is important because it helps. I, I just want to go back real quick. Let's just get right to it, I just it, want to go we? back real quick. I, I just want to talk we about have something. We a lot of ships and vehicles in just our game Just one thing, now. just real quick. Keeping though. brands. This right here. Okay, CIG, listen, if, if anyone from CIG happens to watch this video, can you make the Carrick functional, please? The Carrick is so not functional right now. It's, it's, we have these doors here on the side that don't open. Can we have some opening doors, please? Like, if, if you give me that, I'll buy a Carrick. I'll buy one if you make the side doors open. Fair? Fair. With a consistent theme is important because it helps uh, immerse you in the universe. You, you see a, a shift in a certain boy. style and role. I really am. That's that manufacturer. So having brands and sub-brands or entirely different brands helps strengthen that narrative. MISC is traditionally very industrial, very civilian, and we really like MISC styling as a brand. It made sense to introduce yeah, Mirai as their performance like a, subdivision. A the There's side. a lot of possibilities for where we can take this brand in the future. And not only will Mirai be heading in new directions design-wise, it's also a great opportunity to go in unsafe directions that maybe MISC wouldn't have done themselves. Kind of blending of human and Xi'an technology already in MISC, and one of their charges is going to be taking Guys, it I even gotta farther. gotta be honest, I'm liking this shit. I'm liking the Fury, bro. I'm liking it. Do we get fast before we get furious? With the introduction of Mirai as a brand, this gave us the perfect opportunity to introduce a more military uh, fighter to the lineup. And so we introduced the Mirai Fury. The Mirai Fury is extremely compact. It, uh, it allows... Look how it folds out. You know what I mean? It's almost like, it's almost like a blend between the X-Wing and a TIE Fighter. And they've made it like this own, their own unique thing. I'm really liking the, the design of this. You did a good job with this one, CIG. You knocked it out of the park. Hats off to you. ...itself to fold up into as small a package as we could possibly make a ship of this classification. The Fury is a cockpit with some engines, some components, and some weapons strapped to it, to put it bluntly. So the Mirai Fury aims I'm to take it. everything that I'm makes Jian super impressive with all Guys, of its grab tech it. and ability to gimbal thrusters and 
be super maneuverable. It has really cool folding wings that allows you to get it into tiny ships. So if you have a ship with a cargo grid or an area for cargo that's large enough and a... You know what's hilarious about what they just did? It's like, it's like they almost admit it like, hey, you know, the, the Merlin doesn't work well. So just, uh, just, just get one of these and stick it in the back of your ship and call it even. Just defeats the purpose of having the Merlin in the first place, but I digress. A door big enough to fit it in, you can get the ship on board and helps uh, provide on-demand support from any cool, attacks cool, that cool. you may find yourself coming under whilst out in deep space. Some might look at this and say the Morai theory reminds them of another popular spacecraft. What would you say to that? Uh, I don't know what they're talking about. I know exactly what they're talking about. They're talking about the TIE fighter from Star Wars. I can say it because I'm just a YouTuber. I can say it. And I said it early. It's like a blend between the TIE fighter and the X-Wing. They came together. They had like a little, a nice little spaceship baby. And they call it the Mirai Fury because of copyright issues. You know what I mean? So when you approach the Fury, you'll first notice this big glass. I like how it levitates. Like in that. Dome that gives you massive visibility. And then the seat will pop out and come and present itself to you, a little bit like the Asperia Talon. So you get to look at this massive glass canopy, which is super. I will say that there is one thing, especially if you're using this ship with head tracking, because I did get like to look at this ship during uh, the Invictus stuff during the PTU. And when you look to the left and to the right, the harness right here, I know you guys can't see my, oh, you can see my mouse now. The harness right here, when you look left and right, it does get in the way sometimes. It can impede you. It's not that bad, but it's just like one of those things to where I don't think that it's like fully optimized with the head tracking, you know, but it's it's one of those things that I, I think that they can easily fix that. And I'm just really just being nitpicky right now, but let's continue. Super helpful for the pilot. Also, 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 one of the things I wanted and to say. And when it's in like... Um, I, I'm very happy to see a ship that has dual sticks in it because a lot of people that fly with sticks fly with two of them. So it's, it's good to see that they're making ships that mimic how we actually play the game. And I think that that's very cool. And this flight controller reminds me of a, thr a Thrustmaster T-16. It just has like that same, that same very simple shape to it. It's collapsed mode. You get to see all the different underneath parts of the wing with all the, like the no step on it where the maintenance guys would have to step on. You've got the component bays coming out the side of the body. Everywhere you go, there's just components everywhere. It's crazy how densely packed this thing is together. You've got air-to-air -air refueling for port on the top. Okay, I like that. You've got that. all your personal storage. Um, yeah, and the flaps at the back as well. We can't wait to get atmospheric flight in so those things can work for you. And the lights on the end of the um, wing tips as well that will okay. blink intermittently, so they'll swap around. So when you're in transform mode, and um, they'll kind of like switch which one's going. Alex did an amazing job on that. All around the back, these thrusters kind of presenting like themselves to you in their gravity cradle that will flip up and down depending on whether it's landed or not. When you're in atmosphere, you'll notice the bottom ones move more than the top. But when so if you guys are going to be fighting against the ship in a PvP scenario, the, the best thing that you're going to be able to do to kind of slow the ship down and to make it uh, not uh, as effective is to sub-target the engines. That's going to be the major weak point of the ship. And like, once you take one of the engines down, uh, I think this ship is going to be screwed. You know, I don't think it's going to have the, you know, like some crazy OP shields, but if it's maneuverability, it's its strong point. You got to target the, sh the, not the shield, but the engines sub target. Once you're in space, that flips around. It's so maneuverable. You're constantly going to be throwing it around in directions. It shouldn't be. This looks like, you're so like much pulling fun. stupid amounts of G forces. So having that visibility is going to be really important, and it's something we tried our best not to compromise on. The view from the cockpit allows you to see pretty much the, the whole picture of combat ahead of you. Uh, you have fantastic agility to maneuver yourself it. around I'm over here trying to look uh, around threats, and stuff. And it just looks really it. cool. Just the, the cockpit picture you have with the guns in your view all the time firing away, missiles launching. Damn, who was it? For yourself around uh, threats and it just looks really cool just the the cockpit picture you have with the guns in your view all the time firing away bro you ain't hitting nothing bro who's flying this taffy cig bro 
how are you going how are you going to work at 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 the company and they're doing a showcase and you're recording this and you're shooting not hitting anything bro you got to hit something bro you got to hit something dog come on now hey missiles launching right next to your head it's a truly uh, unique experience compared to our other ships we really tried to keep the hood as minimal as possible that was something i spent a lot of time in white box designing like the layout of it and stuff and um we ended up settling on like just like i also just had a thought come to my head i really think that you're trying to separate the the snub fighters from the racing ships i don't think they want like um racing ships doing combat stuff so i really think they're trying to introduce like more actual snub fighters to the game which i think is cool you know i think that one of the things they need to do is like when they introduce these new ships to the game they need to put like these newer ships into the pve uh scenario i know they have to make like you know uh, ai flight models for all the ships because they all handle differently and all that kind of stuff but still like we have like the same kind of tired ships in in the pve uh room of the game and i think like with ships like the scorpius uh you gotta have ships like the blade the glaive you know all of these other ships that are fighter ships in the game that they don't use instead like we spend our time shooting a reclaimer forever just because it has a bunch of hp like put some of these more maneuverable ships in the game make the uh eclipses and the retaliators where to they to where they use their missiles their torpedoes like make it come on cig you, you have the tools there just please please use them to give the players a more unique experience a small kind of like glass transparent panel of all the mfds and the radar at the top the flight controls fold out of the um the armrest there's a lot going on for people flying their ship so the last thing we want is to like you know overthrow you with buttons area to actually shoot is tiny right this thing's like a real glass cannon it's got such a dominating small profile you probably look at it come towards you're like oh what is that you know it feels like a wasp but you'll probably hear it hit you before you um realize what it is the profile of this it. it's so aggressive it's like these massive triangle shapes but it's still shapes. got that misc kind of flow to that. it so one of the things i cannot wait to see is when i'm stood on like daymar or something and i look up and see like five of these things whiz past me at stupid speed it's just really satisfying okay, to see okay. this silhouette flying around whether you're in it or on the floor looking up this is what I wanted to see. I need to see these instead of the Hercules because the Hercules is a class of ship that I fly. I'm a Hercules guy. I'm not a Caterpillar guy. I know everybody likes the Caterpillar. Everybody's talking about the Caterpillar, but the Caterpillar is a brick. It doesn't have the decoys. It doesn't have the maneuverability of the Hercules. So I think the Hercules is going to be a better uh, compact carrier platform for these ships. The Fury chassis is Wait, designed to support multiple variants, and we are exploring these over time. But we are introducing oh, an this? additional variant alongside the base version at Invictus Launch Week. How come I didn't see uh, the Fury MX inside the PTU? Uh, takes the core of the I'm base Fury words, like, and I didn't, I didn't simply see that replaces part. all the guns with all the missiles. The amount of missiles I saw the missile. on the wings I didn't see is this stupid. Part. I remember I being this. told how many we were going to be putting on it. I did and not I, like, see this. Did everything I could to make sure. Like everything that was supposed to be a size wow. two stayed a size two. I think we've got like 20 missiles on it now, and only like I think it's eight of them are um, size ones. So yeah, have fun with that. It's the absolute Nova damage variant. This thing is designed to put out the maximum amount of damage in as short a period of time as possible. Dude, that thing has the size twos, right? So imagine that thing with some rattlers on it. Oh shit! The fear with some rattlers. That's going to be nasty. That's going to be nasty for sure. On top of all the missiles, uh, we also add a deployable blast shield, so I was which at. Uh, provides additional armor to the front of the ship, whilst Dude, you reducing so many of these things in the trade-off for that. Dude, I, if you guys watch my live streams, right, I was saying in my live streams that you could probably fit three across in this big area, and then you could probably, well, really, you could probably get four across right here in this area. I, I'm, I'm pointing at the screen. I need to use the mouse. You can probably get four if you if you pack them in right. Probably get four in there, four more right here, and then three in the front. This is going to be nasty. This is going to be so much fun. We really wanted to make this 
variant feel different and that's exactly what we've got here with the blast shield i just think it's awesome the way it comes down we got the little uh, mirai boot like screen that. as well taking like some of that. the inspiration now one of the things that i think if they were trying to use some of the Xeon technology i think this right here this this panel right here could have been like a little hologram or something like that to where it's like they, they want to go with that minimalist design they just could have had like a um i'm again i'm pointing but right here, they could have had like some type of uh, like light interface that makes this screen instead of having this actual screen. But this is just me nitpicking. This is just, you know, me doing a review based on like what I'm seeing and all that kind of stuff. From some of the more alien manufacturers as well. And it really gives it that kind of alien vibe. Like you can tell Xi'an Tech's been involved with it when you look at it when it's splash shields down. It's got all these cool sensors on the outside. It just looks utterly terrifying and it's it's awesome so the mx is designed to launch from the parent craft uh, do one or more multiple um, missile attacks on larger crafts so you launch you commit to your run deploy your blast shield down and launch your payload and then get out of dodge and return and you utilizing all the tractor beam improvements in alpha 319 oh, true. you can then rearm the ship and repeat to your heart's content so you could literally stock the inside of a ship with size two and size one weapons or missiles and you can just go back and forth on runs this is sick bro this is tight so the fury is designed to compete against some of our most agile uh, and capable fighters oh, such looking. as the arrow and the gladius okay. It does that I'm by so being to the head much more stuff, agile uh, just, uh, than those, as well as being it. a smaller I see a form. ship and I'm just trying to look around. It does have limitations, it doesn't have a quantum drive, so its range is sort of limited this around hard to planetary hit. bodies, uh, and ideally it is carried within other ships. The Fury doesn't have a quantum drive because there's not room. If we tried to put a quantum drive in this thing, it would have doubled the size of it. I don't know, you, you probably could have stuck a quantum drive like right here in the back, you know what I'm saying? You probably could have stuck something. You, you could have done it, you just didn't want to. You did this for balance. I we get it. You okay? I'm just gonna leave that alone. Alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. They did it for balance. I know. They had to, you know, make it seem like oh, we had to. Des it's make believe, guys. You could have done whatever you wanted to do. We're playing make believe. It's the video game. It's not real life. And then it wouldn't have fit in as many ships as it can. It's more maneuverable. It's faster. It's hev more heavily armed. It's got everything going for it. My favorite thing about the Mirai Fury is definitely the thrusters. We've managed yeah, to I get like this. Uh, fully 180 degree rotating uh, main thrusters, meaning that we don't have uh, specific retros. This also means that it's got much more efficiency when it comes to turning and strafing and all sorts of uh, flight maneuvers because it, it can put its sick. main thrust in pretty much whichever direction it needs to go. They are great ship to bring along as a sort of defensive package to allow you to react yes, to be. threats coming at you um, or launch I gotta very short port. range uh, attack on other ships. I imagine people who are using like eye trackers or like you know they're really like on it like I'm looking around trying to, trying to see what's coming committed. up and um, it's going to be super super useful for them because you're in dogfights constantly. Interesting the way that the, uh, it looks on the screen here it looks a little bit different. It almost looks like half of a butterfly when it's like this in this uh, configuration right here on the screen. Certainly in this thing. Ideally, you would bring multiple of these. This is the uh, Carrick. And because of their size, so you three. can load. So they got three up here in top, but I'm pretty sure you could put three more in the front cargo bay. This is what I'm saying, CIG. Like, why would you even show this, right, when the Carrick opens up literally from the sides? You know, it would be awesome if you were like, hey guys, by the way, by the way, um, we're going to show you this opening from the top and then we're going to open the carrot from the sides. And when the when the fleet week starts or whatever, you're not going to be able to open your carrot from the side doors. That would have been sick. You dropped the ball here, CIG. Drop the ball on this one quite a lot in quite a lot of our uh, other ships. A lot of players and a lot of people like to bandy around the words uh, pocket carrier. Well, th this is the ship for the pocket carrier. This is the ship that will fill the pocket carrier. It's the pocket fighter. In a fleet engagement, the Fury oh, so well, sort of 
takes on that very typical sci-fi trope yes. of uh, How many the, they got in the here? larger fleet engagement. How come they get the lights off? I can't see nothing. Engagement starts, a ship opens its doors, and all these fighters pour out of it. It is. Ooh, how many they got? One, two, three in the front. Three more behind this. That's six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten. And I don't think we're past the elevator yet. There's ten of these things in here so far. This is more than what I estimated. If we look at this section right here, once we come back past this part, this is, I think, where the ladder would be. Unless this is coming out the back. But even if it's coming out the back, it's still kind of the same thing. The ladder would be, or the ladder and the elevator would be on this side. That's still a lot of ships inside of this thing. So if you're in a C2, you could literally stack them, you know, in a, in a way to where you have some face in the back and some face in the front to where it's, a, it's an even smooth deployment. So small and compact. You definitely, if you're, if you're with an org that does a lot of PVP stuff, you definitely need to go and practice that. Okay, because the last thing you want is, because the, the, the ship's probably going to be moving, everyone inside is going to be moving, so definitely practice that before you, you, you try to do a uh, crazy deployment. The really uh, bringing lots of them is no disadvantage to yourself. You you just launch them all out of the ship and they just cause merry havoc. I really want like aircraft carrier vibes off this thing. Are they saying the Idris interior is finished now? Or is this just, do we, do we need to steal an Idris and put some, and put some, and try to see what the inside of it's like now? Is, it, is that what they're saying? And at events like Xeno Threat or Jump Town, you'll just oh, no. be sat on the ground looking up, defending it, and see this kind of normal sized ship coming towards you, and you think, oh, we can deal with that. And then just furies come flying. Now, I know they're doing this for the cinematic, for the visual aspect of the video. I get it. I understand it. I think it's beautiful. I think this looks amazing. I think it looks sick. However, in a realistic scenario, a caterpillar in Atmo is dead on arrival. Okay, because most of the time, you're already going to have people in the air if you're doing Jump Town correctly. If, it, if you're doing it right, you're going to have them in the air already. And those caterpillars, like, to, to, to deploy these for Jump Town, you're going to have to deploy them further away from the facility and not like when you're right on top of it. Because that's just not going to work, ever. Line from all directions. Unless it's a conga line, then it might work. But this is just not good tactics. Things like, yeah, and you just don't know where Morphologists to... Morphologists don't try this and get blown up and then cry about it. Shoot. And, like, all your ground-to-air defenses are, like, stretched because there's so many yeah, small targets fleeting around you. I, ju I just can't wait to see what, what the community does with this ship. This ship has a big place in my heart as it's the first vehicle I've worked on here at CIG. Oh, congratulations. I had so much fun designing like all the intricate details and how it would fold away and how it would all transform when it's in deployed mode. And I was so like impressed and amazed by how everyone from all the different departments brought it together. So it was like this massive moving, everything just seems to be moving constantly when you fly it around. And it really like, feels like guys, it's alive I'm, I'm really almost, thinking and about it's really my satisfying STV to just see how it comes man. over, I and I can't wait to work on more ships that. that give me that feeling. And hopefully everyone is excited about the Fury as we are internally. It's been probably one of the, the most I'm excited, favored man. ships internally really during am. its development. Then we'll look at doing some more variants in the future. So what we learn this? All right, guys, so that's the Fury. Be sure to check out my channel. I stream this game pretty much every day during the week. You know, I do take days off here and there just to take that mental break, make sure I stay strong mentally and all that stuff. Get some of my merch down in the description below. You can see like a little store, buy some of that, support the channel. I'm also giving away a Drake Cutter with a starter package, $60 value, guys. It's free. The, the, the video that you need to comment on is gonna be down in the description as well. And make sure you get yourself in it to win. I'll be giving that ship away once I reach 2,000 subscribers. I've been gaining subscribers a lot in the past week. So that giveaway is going to be coming up soon. And I will see you guys in the next video. Come to my streams. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.